Some people say football's a matter of life and death. Some they said the football's a matter of life and death to you. I said, listen, it's more important than that. I assure you, it's much more important than that. Bill Shankly really hit the spot when he said that. But if he knew the length some football fans go to these days, he'd probably take his words back. Being passionate about the sport you love is one thing, but these are 20 times fans went a bit too far with their antics. Number 1. First, we go to one of the most heated rivalries in football history. The Copa Libertadores final, the pinnacle of South American club football. River Plate, ready for one of the most important games of their lives, were arriving at the stadium hype for glory. Instead, their bus was attacked by Boca Juniors fans. Players were injured, and the game was postponed. No wonder people don't take their families to watch these games. Argentinian fans are wild. Number 2. But they're probably not as loyal as these next guys. Because when Barcelona superstar Luis Figo decided to join bitter rivals Real Madrid, Mallorca fans were livid. And they weren't shy about expressing their displeasure either. Figo's return to his former stomping ground was met with a barrage of objects, including an actual pig's head. This act of disrespect may have been creative, but it definitely crossed the line. Speaking of crossing lines, how about when English fans lost it after losing to Germany? Number 3. The beautiful game turned ugly after England's heartbreaking defeat to Germany in the European Championship. Violence erupted inside and outside Wembley Stadium with fans clashing with police and each other. This widespread disorder cast a dark shadow over the tournament and highlighted the dangers of unchecked fan passion. But that's not all. Some fan actions go beyond violence and enter sickening territory. Number 4. Football's about rivalries, but there's a line between being passionate and being disrespectful. Manchester City fans crossed that line in a horrific way. They flew a banner mocking the death of Leicester City chairman we Chai Siwandanapapa, who tragically died in a helicopter crash. Why did they even do it? To make the players lose their composure? Is it really worth it? Disgraceful behavior like this deserves serious repercussions. Number 5. Football should be a place for celebration and unity, but sadly, the most significant problem it's faced is racism. And as Vinicius Jr. would tell you, Spain's where it's the worst. Atletico Madrid fans have become notorious for their racist chanting aimed at opposing players, particularly black players. And let's face it, even if your team wins because of it, these vile chants create a hostile environment and have no place in the sport. Number 6. National pride, on the other hand, is a big part of international football. So when the Italian fans booed their own national anthem before a Euro 2000 match, it was a shocking display of disrespect. However, their outrage wasn't directed at the team. It was a protest against a new ticketing system they felt was unfair. While their frustration is understandable, booing their own anthem isn't a very good look, especially when others don't exactly know why you're booing. There are always more constructive ways to make a point. Number 7. But hey, at least booing your own country doesn't really put the players in danger. Because back in 2014, Galatasaray's Champions League heartbreak turned violent in Istanbul. After a tough loss to Real Madrid, Galatasaray fans rioted and even threw flares at their own players. Imagine what the players would have gone through having already lost one of the most important games of their careers. Number 8. But again, as much as we hate racism, it's still a problem for way too many players. Colin Wing learned that the hard way when he hurled racist insults at Manchester City's Raheem Sterling. Sterling reported it, and the club actually caught him. Wing's actions earned him a lifetime ban from the stadium, a harsh but necessary consequence. And they really need to ban more people because this next incident goes far beyond fan outrage. Number 9. In the wake of the Hillsborough disaster, where 96 Liverpool fans died in a tragedy, frustrated fans stormed the pitch and protested the police response to the tragedy. After all, it was the police that allowed that many fans to be on that stand and the wait just proved to be too much. But the affected families didn't care about who was at fault, and they definitely didn't need hundreds of fans causing havoc on the field. They should have just remained seated out of respect for the 96 fans we lost. Number 10. And if you think that was scary, wait till you look at this next one. Olympiacos fans are really crazy, man. Imagine walking out to a stadium that's on fire. It looks pretty cool, but think of the children in that crowd. They didn't pay for a ticket to be surrounded by flares. Number 11. That's probably how Balotelli felt when he made a completely normal mistake. The fans went a bit too far. One miss shouldn't mean this. Balotelli, Italy's striker, faced a horrific response after a missed Euro 2012 penalty. 
Racist abuse and death threats rain down, and for a guy who already had a pretty horrible relationship with the fans, this was pretty much the last straw. Number 12. Fans aren't supposed to pressure their team further, they're meant to help. But not like these fans tried to help the team, talk about desperate measures. Fans of a team tried to bribe a referee with kebabs before a big game. It's probably just a joke, but it could definitely come off as offensive. Number 13. That was a complete failure. Not this next attempt, though. In 2014, Atletico Madrid fans were caught using a drone to peek at Real Madrid's training session before the Champions League final. This blatant attempt to steal tactics earned them a hefty fine, while Real Madrid went on to win the coveted trophy. Even if they got the footage, who on the Atletico roster would listen to a bunch of guys with a drone? They pretty much got fined for no reason. Talk about a backfired scheme. Number 14. But even attempting to help the team can get dangerous sometimes. This Austrian fan had seen enough. The linesman wasn't doing his team any favors, so he took him out by hurling a cup at him. Fans like this should be hit in the head with a stick and be asked how they like it. Number 15. But they're not as annoying as streakers. They make the game stop for millions of people around the world. And why? Just to be brutally tackled by the stewards. This Vitali guy's a serial streaker, and during the 2022 Champions League final between Liverpool and Tottenham, he asked his girlfriend to bolt onto the pitch instead of doing it himself. She got caught pretty quickly, but they got his five seconds of fame. Number 16. He's lucky someone like Jose Mourinho hasn't told him off yet, because this fan got absolutely wrecked. Not all clashes happen on the pitch. Manchester United manager Jose Mourinho got into a heated argument with a fan who criticized his team's performance. Imagine the disrespect. Number 17. But hey, it can always be more disrespectful. These fans disrespected the GOAT and got away with it. After Argentina's Copa America loss to Brazil, a banner appeared in Buenos Aires demanding Lionel Messi's head on a platter. They're supposed to support their best players, but those guys said this instead. Number 18. But those were just words. This fan tried to actually take his head off on the pitch. In a bizarre on-field protest, a fan during a 2022 Everton match zip-tied his neck to a goalpost. Imagine if they just started pulling him until either the zip-tie or his neck broke. He halted the game for a significant time as security personnel used bolt cutters to free him. That's not the way to protest. Could someone sign this kid up to Twitter and give him a phone? He can talk all he wants there. Leave the football for the professionals. Talk about dedication, even if a bit misguided. Number 19. This was just one guy, but when Salah was about to knock Senegal out of the World Cup qualifiers, the entire stadium crossed the line. The poor guy faced more than just the net during their World Cup qualifier against Senegal. Senegal fans bombarded him with laser pointers during a crucial penalty kick, hindering his vision. Salah missed the shot and Senegal went on to win the match. The fans probably felt pretty good about themselves, but Senegal didn't deserve to go through after cheating to get the win. Number 20. Our final entry though is kinda wholesome. Speed's not a fan, he's more like a fanatic. Speed's constant praise for Cristiano Ronaldo, often bordering on disrespecting other players, has become a source of amusement and annoyance. Is it genuine admiration or just a Ronaldo obsession? Only Speed knows for sure. Boy, some of these fans really lose their minds because of football. Someone needs to teach them to enjoy it, but do it responsibly, because other people's experiences are also important, just like yours. So why not enhance your experience and football knowledge by watching this next video as well?